Welcome back. On Tuesday, the Director of Press and Public Relations at the Ministry of Labor and Employment announced that the federal government plans to increase the current pay of government workers by 40%. Now, this increase is the first since the national minimum wage rate increased from 18,000 to 30,000 naira in April of 2019, which applied to all employers of labor in Nigeria with more than 25 employees. Although the government's decision to increase the minimum wage is driven, by the rise in the cost of living over the last four years and the expected impact of the removal of fuel subsidies on the purchasing power of households. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that average prices have risen by 85% over the same period. I have financial and economic expert, Bolaho Oloja, they joining me now to analyze this development. Good morning to you, Bolaho. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Yeah, good morning, Justin. Nice to be on the program. Yes, it is indeed our pleasure to have you. Now, first off, Bolaho, let's get your summary review of um, the fuel subsidy removal at this particular time. Well, there's never going to be a perfect time for the removal of um, subsidy without some contestations and protests of effect. Um, the closest we have had to a very good time uh, were those seasons when crude oil price was extremely low. In fact, at a point in time in year 2020, uh, crude oil in the international market became zero. Zero dollar was the value. Um, some even argued that it went to negative. So those could have been the closest we will ever have to a perfect season to have removed the failed subsidy. Unfortunately, we missed those two windows. There was one in 2015. Uh, there has been another one now. In, there was another one in 2020. So it is what it is. Where we are right now is a situation in which the payment for full subsidy has become a major distortion and, 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 and a source of economic leakage. So we must confront it. The question now is, how do we approach that? In my opinion, that is, it is the how that All is right. the issue. Okay. Not whether we should remove those subsidies. I believe we should remove subsidy on PMS. But how we go about that to minimize the burden on the people mm. and to ensure soft landing and effective implementation um, is what I think uh, we should be looking all right, speaking of um, implementation, the house and the soft landing, uh, like you have mentioned, there has been talk of inflation that will accompany the removal. And incidentally, the federal government is increasing workers' pay by 40%. Uh, but let's also bear in mind that uh, uh, prices have gone so fast to as much as an increase, rather, by as much as 85%. You know? So just how far? Would this go with the you know forty percent increment and now of course and the prices of uh, goods and services spiking by eighty five percent? It's a cocktail of um, of, of problems, uh, which is why it requires careful thinking through. We must think through the entire process um, and manage it properly, and it starts from being able to build trust with the people. To build trust with the people, we have to come to the table with honesty. And I'll give you a very important part of honesty. As we speak today, we do not know for certain how many liters of PMS is consumed in Nigeria daily. And it is not impossible to know. We can know it if we're really serious about knowing it. It comes across to me as if we have deliberately chosen not to know it because we needed to leave a gap somewhere for some certain level of shenanigans that have been out there for a long time to continue. There are beneficiaries of, of, the, of the current regime and they will want it to continue along that line. Part of the things we also need to put on the table is that citizens are sensitive to the, to the fact that uh, we are not refining our, our crude oil in Nigeria. They want a situation in which government can say um, our refineries, the, the public refineries especially, are working. Can we get those public refineries to indeed work? I know the contracts have been signed. In fact, the second phase for the Portacol refinery contract is, meant, is, 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 is due this month. 
-hmm. Second phase should have been completed in the month of April. So where are we on that? How many liters of fuel are we going to be able to produce from our public refineries by uh, the end of June when fuel subsidy is being proposed? Will Dangote refineries be on stream by the end of June? Mm. We don't know. Okay. Coming back to the issue of um, the, the problem that uh, uh, increase in um, salary itself will cause, definitely it will fuel its own size of the inflation. And that is because our approach to salary increment has never been scientific. Rather, it has been arbitrary. So 40%, if I ask now, the people who determine the, what exactly was the base, basis for arriving at 40%. Mm. You'll be shocked that the basis will not be convincing. It will be totally against the reality of the situation. Unlike most structured society where increments are, there are elements of <clears throat> a scientific basis. There are empirical data that are fed into certain, uh, that generate certain variables, which are fed into a, some template to arrive at how much percentage are we increasing salaries with. But we don't seem to do that here. We wake up and decide, oh, it should be 18 to 30, oh, it should be 30 to whatever. That's part for the minimum wage. And, and, and all these things have their impact because it becomes very difficult to harmonize policies. Mm. So there will be an element of inflation from that salary increase. Now, I'm also more worried about the reaction of the people to issues of salary increase as well as possible fuel subsidy. A very good example of the way people behave is what we saw during the cashless policy, mm. the attitude of the POS operator. So you're going to have a reaction from segments of the society that will say, oh, because they have increased your salary by 40%. I mean, this is outside of the normal economic reaction. Yeah. The, the psychological reaction of the market to say, they have increased your salary by 40%. I must take my own share of that 40%. Mm. And you start to see prices increase, you know, more than correspondingly in the market, just as a reaction to that increase, to say, I want to take my own part of it. When you also remove first subsidy, Apart from the normal economic reaction, you also have the people reaction, which will further aggravate the problem. We saw that with the POS issues. Right. What you will find is, uh, let's say price has become price of uh, uh, PMS becomes triple. But don't forget that that triple price in a bus, in a commercial bus of 10 passengers, that increment is going to be shared out by 10 passengers. Sometimes it will be shared out by more than 10 passengers True. as passengers alight along the way and new passengers are picked up. But you will be surprised at the rates of increment by the operators of those services. Even in those periods when oil price increased by 20%, operators of transportation doubled prices or even went more than double because there was a 20% increase in right. fuel price. And they will tell you that, don't you know that fuel price has increased? Meanwhile, fuel price, price only increased by 20%. You have doubled your own price, despite the fact that right. the increment of 20% is going to be shared across 10 passengers. Right, but so let's look at another... normal economic reaction. There is also the people reaction. So we have to well. coordinate and okay. manage all these reactions for a softer uh, effect on the people. Okay, but well, let's look at another issue right now because uh, the federal government announced um, an 800 million uh, world um, bank, uh, 800 million US dollars uh, world bank um, grant. In your opinion, do you really think uh, this would actually uh, serve the, the palliative measures that it intends to? Uh, the government is targeting 50 million vulnerable Nigerians for, or 10 million households. Just what are your thoughts about this, really? Well, Palliatives um, do work to a certain extent. Um, I, I think there is a psychological part of the palliative that, uh, uh, oh, I'm getting something from the government. It means that the government thought about me. But also there is the tendency for it to, you know, exert a little bit of inflationary pressure as well because we're actually pumping that money 
into the system. However, by the concept, the concept behind palliative in itself, don't forget that um, in COVID season, for example, America printed literally $2.5 trillion and just shared out to people as palliative. So, uh, uh, and the implication is the same thing as what we are trying to solve in Nigeria today. In those extreme seasons in America, and not just America, it was across, across the world that palliative were administered. They were administered because it, it is perceived that, number one, it will put a little bit of money in the hands of uh, the lowest rung of the ladder. And there's also the psychological part of um, government thought about me and is giving me some. But that amount, as far as fuel subsidy is concerned in Nigeria, I am not so sure that it will cut it. I think it will be too small. It will come to about 5,000 Naira per month. Um, but the kind of increases we're likely to see, both in the transport uh, sector and other segments of the society, are going to be much more than what 5,000 can solve, um, especially in urban uh, Nigeria. But my bigger worry is the capacity to even implement a cash transfer. The database, have we ever audited that database before? Who are the people there? Is it a case of 5 million real people and 5 million ghosts? We are persistently seeing ghosts. It is not rumors. Ghosts are all over in the system, from the federal government to the state government, and all similar schemes that involve passing money on to people, whether it's the amnesty uh, payment that you want to look at, or it is the special labor works that employ 774,000 Nigerians across local government sometimes last year. We have not shown the capacity to be able to implement those kind of transfer effectively. A lot of that money, I fear, went up in the wrong hands and will not get to the intended people who are the lowest rung of the ladder. So we might end up pumping $800 million that will go into the hand of the a people that are not intended for, and we will just force an additional inflationary pressure uh, uh, on the economy. All right, I must say a very big thank you to Bolaho for uh, finding time to share those useful insights, of course, on the fuel subsidy removal and the impact of Nigerian workers on Nigerian workers. That is, we do appreciate your time, Bolaho. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, there is more to expect on Business Insight after this quick break. Stay with us.